technique. That age old subject. Technique. Why do guitar players get so caught up in technique? I think I know the answer, and I think you know the answer too. And what I'm going to urge you to do today is not to abandon your technique, but to not lose sight of why we have technique. So, when I was younger, I was really into, in fact the reason I started playing guitar was because of bands like The Offspring. I was really into that American punk, um, pop punk sound. And then I kind of got into bands like Slipknot and I discovered Joe Satriani. In fact, I remember a total guitar issue that had uh, Noodles from The Offspring, Mick Thompson from Slipknot and Joe Satriani on the cover and they sort of all interviewed each other. Um, and that was super cool to me. Um, and then from there, from reading more from Mick Thompson, I discovered guys like Paul Gilbert and Jason Becker. And I liked that. I remember being into Ozzy and, and Zach Wilde and then Black Label Society, obviously. Um, and that was sort of my path into the shred thing. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I loved, love, still love, and will always love the shred thing. But I also love, you know, the country, the, the jazz, the, the blues, pop. I love pop music. Um, there's so many styles of music out there, and they don't need to be, you know, you don't need to pick a team. This, this music isn't, you know, subsects of religions. It's music. It's expression, it's enjoyment, it's entertainment. So I remember when I started learning to shred, the thing I really liked, and I could pull out the book, is when I got Troy Stetner's uh, Speed Mechanics for Lead Guitar. Great book, I'm sure many of you have read it. Um, I could pull out my copy of that and you could still see the pencil markings in there where I'd marked in you know, the tempos that I'd been working on. Now, that was really cool and exciting when I was younger because it gave me a goal, it gave me a measuring stick. It enabled me to be able to see my progress over time. That's very important when you're learning anything. I've recently just learned to drive and during the process of learning to drive, it was the progress that kept you going. It was seeing how far you'd come that kept you going. Now, when I teach now, I teach more conceptual based stuff. I teach. Um, I teach th how to think while improvising and things like that, how to free up the mind, how to get the mind to think faster. And I see the same frustrations in all of my students because they're learning and it's hard for them to judge their progress. They can't see how far they've come until they go back and watch a video of themselves from a year ago. That can be quite hard. But when you're practicing shred technique and things like that, it's very easy to mark your progress. You can see I can play this 20 BPM faster than I could last week. Now this is where things get dangerous. Once you get into that mindset of being able to grade your progress, it becomes about the progress. Music stops becoming a form of expression and it becomes something that you're grading. It becomes a sport. It becomes competitive. Now I'm not shooting that down because we've all been there. I've, I've, I've been there in fact on my album, Hellcat Molly's Out of the Ashes. Um, there's plenty of fast guitar playing on there. There's some really fast chops on there. And it's not necessarily competitive, but there is that feeling of, I'm playing rock music here. This is my first outing uh, as a lead guitar player on CD. As a sort of band leader, I need to show everybody what I can do. I need to show that I can't be, I shouldn't be trifled with, as it were. Which sounds pathetic when I actually say it out loud, right? It's hard to get out of that mentality though. In the rock setting, guys have played fast for years. You have to be able to show your chops. But what I'm getting at is that we don't ever want to lose sight of why we're playing our chops. It's to express ourselves. Now, thankfully, I've not stayed on a diet of guys like, you know, the shrapnel shredders. Not that I've not learned, you know, my fair share from incredible players like Scott Michu or, or Jason Becker or, or Tony McAlpine or, or Greg Howe or and there's so many guys out there, so many unknowns as well um, that it's never ending. I've learned my fair share of things from them, but at the same time, I've also learned my fair share of things from the blues guys that I'm really into. Um, guys like Albert King was quite a big influence on me um, and Stevie Ray Vaughan I mentioned in a previous video. Uh, but I've done my listening to all of those guys. I've been back and, and done the Sun House thing. Um, I really got into that vibe and then 
the slide players like Derek Trucks, I really got into that. And then uh, I'm massively into Scott Henderson and, and Jimmy Herring. And I like when these guys play fast, but really it's their phrasing tricks and, and techniques that grab me. And if you're a metal player watching this, you probably know that from guys like Marty Friedman. Marty Friedman, who has such a unique sound, or someone like Alex Skolnick, a unique sound. Chris Poland, a unique sound. Then I say someone like Michelangelo, a unique sound, or just very proficient. Rusty Cooley, a unique sound, or very proficient. Now obviously I'm not beating on those guys because if I go over to my CD collection over there, I've got Rusty Cooley albums and I've got Michelangelo albums. I've listened to Rusty Cooley, I've listened to Michelangelo. I have Rusty Cooley instructional products, I have Michelangelo instructional products. Um, sometimes there are times where I want to put that music on, but other times I want to listen to other things. Um, what I'm getting at is that technique is nothing more than what we use in order to express ourselves. Don't lose sight of why we learn technique. Don't lose sight when you're practicing your alternate picking of why, why you alternate picking. You're not doing it so you can alternate pick. You're not doing it so you can be faster than that guy and be faster than that guy because, and here's the kicker, there will always be someone faster than you, always. And they're probably gonna be an eight-year-old Asian kid. If you're trying to compete you're always going to be beaten and you're never going to find the joy in music. I always like to think of it like this. When I play music, when I play solos, when I gig, anything like that, whenever there's an audience, whenever there's someone listening to what I'm doing, if they can't sing what I play, then they probably don't want to hear it. The real battle when I'm playing my music is to play what I want to hear and not what my fingers want to do. That's really hard, playing what you want to hear and not playing what your fingers want to play. It's very easy to fall into that trap of just moving your fingers where you know it's gonna work. You might start by listening and playing, I wanna hear this and then this, and I'm gonna go here and play these notes. But before you know it, you start slipping into, and I know this works next, and I know that then I can play this. You don't wanna do that. Well, at least in, for where I am now, you want to put more time into what do I want to hear here? What's going to be effective? What are my audience going to remember? What are people going to sing? Playing Flight of the Bumblebee at 1,200 BPM per minute? Bullshit. I'd say it's a good place to leave it. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. Um, you can find my album, Hellcat Molly's Out of the Ashes. There's a, an image of it up there. Um, you can find it on all of your digital distribution services and you can contact me for limited edition CDs, physical CDs. Uh, I hope you check that out and you enjoy it. If you've got any comments on this subject, please do drop a comment in the box below um, or hit me up on some of my social media outlets. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you on the next video.